We went from Cheap's death and Joe's recovery, to Mac and Joe's ending struggle against each other. When I made a video covering the first half or so of the series, the one thing I focused on was comparing these two arcs. I still think the story is stronger in the beginning than it has been for most of the ending. However, the buildup for this moment was by no means bad. The development for Mac and his struggles, Joe going through massive character development and changing his philosophy about megaloboxing, all of this elevates the previous episodes by a massive amount. It was a slow burn. It takes its time bringing up these characters unlike the beginning portion that got right to the point, with its themes and ideas. If you want to hear my thoughts on Chief's story, and the first half of the anime, check out the video in the card above, then come back. Now let's talk about how this story takes an interesting running perspective on buildup. Normally buildup is gradual, with each of the important story elements becoming progressively more developed. Megalobox Nomad doesn't necessarily follow this format. Starting from Mac becoming the Megalobox champion, the story shifts to Liu's defeat and how it impacts the main cast. Joe finds his resolve and reason to fight Mac, while the old crew is coming back together. Most of the beginning sections of the build-up are about Joe, and the only parts we get from Mac are how the brain chip is messing with his mind. But the closer we get to the final fight, we find out more about his past, specifically the people from his past, learning what choices made him into an experimental lab rat, and the running thematic story is front and center. The Hummingbird and the Nomad is not a complicated story by any means, but the interpretations in the various scenes it's shown in give it new meaning. When we see it with Mac, we think of him as the Nomad that is finally being led back home, hearing the story of the Hummingbird. But with Joe, after once being the Nomad, we associate him with being the Hummingbird, the person who will potentially lead Mac onto a better path, just as Chief did for him. Of course, there are standard or more conventional ways to chart out a story, like the hero's journey, but a mark of good writing is being able to take convention and create a format that better fits your own story. The buildup is made more effective because of the individual focus each of them gets. If the story was constantly giving each character the same amount of spotlight, it would feel like Mac is being put into a main protagonist role. But he isn't. He is Joe's opponent, and giving very specified time to focus on him helps establish this character while not detracting from the main draws. Joe is the person we're following, but knowing more about Mac is what really makes the ending so interesting. Who do we really want to win? The first season had a very similar idea going for Joe and Yuri, but even though we see a lot of his struggles, he wasn't necessarily necessarily someone you were rooting for, at least not as much as some people are rooting for Mac. But the real star of this story's buildup is Joe's character development. Honestly, aside from the changes we see from Joe in the first couple episodes, I thought he would remain pretty much the same, but I was proven wrong in episode 11. A flashback happens with Joe talking to Chief during their training. Joe going gearless is brought up, and a fundamental difference in each of their philosophies is shown. Joe was gearless because he didn't want to have to rely on his gear. He wanted to win on his own merits. He wanted to fight and prove what real megalo boxing was. It was a very selfish goal and ideology that in the end ended up being his own undoing. When faced with the end of Nambu's life, he again decided to do everything himself. He shouldered the burden of defeating Yuri's fighter, and to become a beacon of hope for the people he cared about. He wanted to show them not to give up, that there was still hope. But even if he had won that fight, did he make the right choice? This idea is confronted head-on when Chief tells him why he wears gear. He speaks about how everything he does is for his people, that he isn't alone. The gear that his son Carlo customized for him is how he enters the ring knowing his people are with him, and he refuses to act purely for himself. We only learn about this conversation later on, but by the time he brings it up, Joe's mind has been changed. Not only has he learned what mistakes he made in the past, but he is demonstrating just how much Chief's wisdom has been imparted onto him. For the first time as Joe, he'll be getting into the ring with gear on, and not just any gear, but Chief's gear that was given to him when he passed. It's been customized for his smaller stature, and I couldn't help but shed a couple tears. I've been waiting for Joe to bring up Chief's gear, and I was hoping he would put it on, and it looks like I'm getting everything I wanted. Each of the characters have gone through strong character development, and going into the final Final episode, each of them are resolved to win. Who is the nomad and who is the hummingbird? Are either of them? All of these questions frame the final confrontation. And then comes episode 13, the climax. Similar to season one, the ending leaves a bittersweet feeling. Again, the finale wasn't about the actual fight itself. Shirato and the best technology plot was being wrapped up, and overall was a nice ending, but I don't think it succeeded, as well as the first season did. The fight was built up for the whole season, and with both of them gearless, wailing on each other for rounds on end. It was moving, but weirdly enough, while this ending was solid, for me at least, it didn't meet the hype that the setup put forward. However, Joe and Chief's gear did not disappoint, though I thought it was an odd choice to have him announce it the day before, instead of surprising everyone. It would have made for a cool moment. They also didn't give us any real good full body shots of Joe and his gear, which I was hoping for. In the end, they were both the nomad. Mac was being led home by his family, and Joe by his. It's a sweet ending. It has the same kind of wrap up as the first season, and it's great to see everything end well for these characters, in spite of the foreshadowing of something bad happening to one of them. Over Overall, the writing for Megalobox Nomad was mixed. The first four to five episodes were amazing, easily a nine or a ten. But after that, if I'm being honest, it felt kind of average. The one thing I kept noticing throughout the season was how much less work the show seemed to be putting in as time went on. The best parts of the first season 
for the voice acting, visuals, and music. Though some of the tracks in season 2 were good, again in the first half mostly, there weren't as many that really drew me in. The visuals as well felt a lot more static here. While the artistic style was the same, everything felt very toned down, which to be fair, may have been on purpose. This is a more laid back somber story, so it makes sense to slow down the visuals. There just weren't as many moments past the first arc that really stood out to me. I just can't help but compare them, and see just how much they vary in intrigue. But overall I would still give the writing here an 8. The characters were strong, especially Joe's development in the last 3 episodes was really effective. Have you seen season 2's finale? What do you think about the ending? And how does it compare to what came before? Let me know in the comments below, and make sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to be covering more spring anime soon so look out for that. I hope to see you next time.